side. That's a base hit. Come around. He will score. 0 oh, 2 swing and a miss. Strike three. All the months of waiting, the off season workouts, all the anticipation, though, the season is finally here. Has to be the best time of the year, right? Oh, it's great. Yeah, this is a great time of year, and you're right. There's a, you know, just been waiting a long time to get to it. And so we're excited to get going on Friday. That'll be, that'll be fun. We've got a great group of guys. We look forward to it. Before we get into this year, let's talk about what's really been an exciting era of Tennessee Tech baseball of late. Coming off the back-to-back 40-win -back seasons, just the second team in OVC history to do that. End up getting five players drafted in the top 20 rounds. Seems to be a lot of momentum with your program. Yeah, well, we, you know, you attribute that to uh, our coaches have done a great job recruiting. Our assistant coaches have done a great job bringing guys in, and then once the guys get here, they are developing and getting better and better. And so, you know, a lot of that uh, goes into this locker room and these guys that we have. We've been very fortunate to have great people, great young men that work really hard and uh, that want to win. They're very competitive, and yeah, to have five guys drafted last year and six signed with Major League Baseball, that's a big deal. And it's probably got to be near an all-time record for an OVC program to have six guys sign with Major League Baseball and may be the record. And uh, so to have that, it's exciting. There's a lot of good things going on right now. 2-1. This one is hit high and deep to left. Back goes Allen. He's at the track, the wall, and not going to get it. Well, a lot of the accolades. You guys did fall short of one of the big goals last season, winning an OVC championship and getting to an NCAA regional. First of all, how difficult was that? But more importantly, what is it about this group that's going to be able to turn the page and hone in on 2015? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to lie to you. It, it was difficult. I mean, that's, that's a tough thing. We feel like we had a good enough team to win that, um, to win our league in, in the regular season and the postseason, and we finished second in both. And that's not fun when you feel like you've got the team that can do that. But the reality of it was that we did not play good enough baseball the final two days of the season. And so the team that played the better baseball beat us. And you tip your hats and, you, and you've got to move on. That's, that's the great thing about this game, um, except at the finish, you do get to move on and play another day. You know, Friday, we're going to go play a good baseball game. Opportunities again there Saturday. Saturday, you're going to play opportunities there again Sunday. That's unlike a lot of sports where you just get so many opportunities to, um, you know, come back and, and play again. Whether it's from playing a bad game or playing a good game, the opportunity is right there to be had quickly. And that's very unique, really, to baseball. Well, one of the big storylines heading into the year, we talked about the five players drafted in the top 20 rounds, and that doesn't even include the conference's all-time leader in home runs and runs batted in in Zach Stevens. How do you overcome some of the losses and more of the decorated players in tech history? Well, you know, again, it, it, there are a lot of losses. I think, you know, out of, the, out of the six guys that signed with Major League Baseball, and you say five in the top 20, four in the top 12 rounds, two of those guys were junior pitchers, a fifth rounder and a 12th rounder. That's hard. I mean, I'm again, it's, it's a lot to replace. There's no question about that. But with all that being said, again, our assistant coaches have done a great job bringing guys in. There's guys that played last year that are back, you know. And, and, and by the way, we're missing a couple guys that were all conference guys that didn't even get drafted, you know, that were, that were also losing from last year's squad. But with that being said, we've got a lot of guys coming back. You know, we've got a shortstop in Dylan Boshears. He's the best I've ever coached. Been coaching, I don't know, 18, 20 years now, however long it's been. He is the best. I would not trade him for one other shortstop in the entire country. Don't care who it is, would not trade him. Uh, we've got Jake Rowland in center field. Jake is his finest center fielder as I've coached. Guy gets after it, hard-nosed player, great hitter, great power, great up the middle guy to go along with Bo Shears at shortstop. So, and then we've got Jordan Hopkins. If I were to name three guys positionally that we have back, we got Jordan Hopkins back as our starting catcher. And you know, Paris got drafted in the 20th round last year, our catcher last year, but Hoppy is right on the same plane defensively as Paris was, and he was very good defensively, and Hoppy can really, really hit. So we've got some guys already that have a lot of experience back, and then our assistant coaches have done a great job recruiting some of these new guys, and some of the guys have been waiting in the wings a couple years. in and want a deep left center. Well, you spoke of it earlier. One of the guys that is back, senior Dylan Boshears, just named preseason OVC Player of the Year. 
Entering now his fourth year with the program, what's it been like to coach him? Oh, he's a, he's a dream. I mean, you know, I, I just does everything right. I mean, just does everything right. Off the field, does it right. Um, classroom, does it right. On the field, does it right. He is the, he is the guy that you want. And, and we've been fortunate, we've got a lot of those guys, but Dylan, um, and, and just so happens that with all those great things he brings, all those great attributes and characteristics of a person, he also happens to be extremely, extremely blessed and talented as a baseball player. Now offensively, last year, you guys led the nation in home runs, 15 more than the next place team. We talked about a little earlier, lose some of that firepower, Zach Stevens, Brandon Thomas, and Daniel Miles, a couple of players that come to mind. That being said, how much does that change the style of Tennessee Tech's offense this year? You know, our system will never change. Our system is what it is. Now, with that, we have to adapt to what we have. And yes, I, will we hit 83 home runs again? No, I, I, I don't know if anyone will. I, you know, I don't, I don't know, but we have a very good offense. I was thinking about this exact thing last night. What we have offensively right now that I think is actually a little bit better than what we had is, is guys having really great plans at the plate. And, and I, it just leads to great hitting. And that's what we've got. And I'm really excited to watch that play out. We're different. The power numbers will not be the same. We still have great, great hitters. 45 and two-thirds innings of work. And he gets one there. Clutch strikeout for David Hess. It's his first of the evening. The CEO stares in. Ready and willing. Gets him to end the well, ball. We spent a lot of time talking about the offense. Let's, let's shift to the pitching. You brought it up earlier. Two big losses. David Hess, the ace of the staff, fifth round draft pick. Also, Seth Lucio, the all time saves leader at Tennessee Tech. He's a 12th round pick. Still, though, a lot of nice pieces to this pitching puzzle. What's your take on the staff going into the year? A ab absolutely. We've, we've got some guys back that are seasoned and, and ready to go. Um, John Gora is a phenomenal left-handed pitcher for us. He led the nation in junior college three years ago, actually, in ERA, and uh, he just pitchability is through the roof. Just great, great pitchability, great guy. Oh, another great young man to be around. And, you know, we've got some other pieces to the puzzle. Right now, Jeb Scoggins, if I were to name today of, of who's going to kind of take Seth Lucio's role, it would be Jeb Scoggins. He's a senior right-handed pitcher for us. Um, you talk about the consummate worker, consummate mentality that you want in a pitcher and a guy that's going to be in a competitive moment situations throughout the course of a season or a game. I want Jeb Scoggins out there. I mean, I, it's, it's, who we, it's, it's who you want. So I look at our pitching staff. The one thing that this staff has better than any I've ever had at Tennessee Tech is quality pitching, not just pitching depth, quality pitching depth, really, really good pitching depth. And so that's exciting to, to watch play out. All right, lastly, coach, finish this sentence. In order for the Golden Eagles to have success in 2015, they have to. Pitch and defend, pitch and defend. If we pitch and defend, we'll be, we'll be as good as we've ever been. This would have the a team the, the best opportunity. The best, and we have the ability to do both those. You know, we were top 10 in the country in fielding percentage the last two years, maybe 12th two years ago and 10th last year. This team has the ability to do that again, for sure. No question, maybe even better. And pitching, because of the depth we have, the quality depth we have, this should be one of our best years on the mound. So, but you gotta go do it. And if we do those two things, this, this, this team will be one of the finest we've had here.